The Kayam missile, first introduced in 2010, is a single-stage, liquid-propelled, short-range ballistic missile developed by the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Aerospace Force IRGCF, using the progress made in developing the Shahab-class ballistic missile family with the assistance of countries such as North Korea, China, and Russia. The baby bottle designed detachable warhead, which boosts hit sensitivity to high levels, is said to give the Kayam-1 missile a low radar signature, and the missile provides an edge over defensive systems due to its speed in the terminal stage. The Kayam-1, unlike the Shahab-2, did not have tail wings and previously had a range of 700 to 800 kilometers and a payload of 750 kilograms. Furthermore, the missile had a SEP of 100 meters, circular error probable. The missile, which entered Iranian troops' arsenal in 2011, was first utilized operationally in 2017 and 2018 to strike Daesh targets in Syria. During the same time period, UN reports claimed that Iran began transferring its Qayyum 1 missiles to the Houthi movement in Yemen under the name Burkan 2H. After Houthi forces targeted Saudi Arabia's critical energy infrastructure sites with Burkan 2H missiles, which have comparable design features and dimensions to Qayyum 1, the name Qayyum 1 became well known in the media. According to a report released by Tasnam News Agency on Monday, January 3, the new Qayyum missile's error range has been decreased from 100 meters to 50 meters, and the missile's range has been extended from 700 to 800 kilometers to 1,000 kilometers. Apart from the decreased set, circular error probability, value and greater range, the technical features of the new missile have also changed, according to the information provided. The upgraded version of the Qayyum missile has a 600kg warhead and can reportedly travel at a speed of 1,935 meters per second. The Qayyum missile has a diameter of 888 millimeters, a length of 11,846 meters, and a weight of 7,029 kilograms. The time it takes to prepare the missile for launch has also been lowered by 20 minutes, according to reports. Iran, which has been developing missiles since the 1980s, has one of the most diversified missile arsenals in the Middle East. The Iranian government continues to use and develop cruise missiles with a range of 2,500 kilometers, as well as various types of short range, 300 to 700 kilometers, and medium range, 2,000 kilometers, ballistic missiles, despite its disagreements with Western countries, particularly the United States, over its ballistic missile program. It announced at the start of 2021 that it will not engage in any negotiations on the restriction of missile activities. Meanwhile Iran using its military to make threats against Israel is nothing new, but it's significant that these latest exercises pointed explicitly to Iran's nuclear infrastructure as a target. Also of interest is the fact that the IRGC has shown off apparent plans to use ballistic missiles in combination with drones to attack the Dimona facility. In the past, as during the attack on Saudi Arabian energy facilities in 2019, Iranian drones have been used together with cruise missiles to hit key infrastructure. The Houth has claimed responsibility for those attacks, but there is widespread agreement that they were orchestrated by Tehran. The layering of high-end and lower-end capabilities of vastly different performance capabilities greatly complicates defending against a potential strike. Also, the weapon used can be better tailored for the target it is intended for. On the other hand, there is a huge difference between blowing up an apparent cinder block bunker structure on a range as part of a military exercise and an attack on a genuine Israeli facility far away that would also have to deal with that country's highly advanced air defense network, which includes anti-ballistic missile capabilities that are expressly designed to fend off exactly this type of offensive. After all, Iran has on more than one occasion destroyed a mocked-up U.S. Navy aircraft carrier in an event that was clearly tailored at least as much for propaganda value as it was a genuine reflection of military capabilities.
With that in mind, it seems at least highly probable that the Demona attack exercise was just as much of a symbolic act as one used for training and testing. As for the standoff between Iran and Israel, that shows no signs of abating. Israel continues to oppose efforts to resurrect the 2015 nuclear deal with Tehran, more formally known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action JCPOA. This deal had provided for a partial lifting of sanctions imposed on Iran in exchange for the country reducing its nuclear activities and opening up its facilities for enhanced inspections. Then U.S. President Donald Trump abandoned the JCPOA in 2018. While the current administration under President Joe Biden has advocated a return to the terms of the 2015 deal, Israel doesn't think the deal goes far enough. 